Technology continues to disrupt the video and broadcast sectors at an ever-increasing rate. From the OTT providers riding on top of telecoms networks to the network operators themselves launching their own video-based services. Meanwhile, the established broadcasters are looking at ways they can evolve and out-disrupt the disruptors. At least that's what the BBC is doing. And I'm pleased to say I'm joined today by Bill Thompson, who is Principal Research Engineer for BBC R&D, and also from Salford Media City by Nick Hansen, who is Development Producer for BBC R&D. Bill and Nick, thank you both very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Good to be here. Now, we're going to be looking at some uh, really significant innovations that are, that are coming out of BBC R&D at the moment. Um, Nick, we're going to talk to you in a moment, but, but Bill, if I can start by, by focusing on BBC Box. Now, security, trust, confidentiality, you know, the use and abuse of personal data is increasingly a widespread concern. Why does the BBC, a broadcast company, take this so seriously that it is engaged in R&D activity to, to come up with solutions to the problem? I think because one of the roles of R&D generally is to look in the five and ten year time frame to, to figure out what's coming next and what will be disruptive and, and to give the BBC and indeed public service broadcasters around the world, because we're, we're, you know, we collaborate, some idea about what needs to be done. And the issues around the use of personal data, the, 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 the conversations we've seen happening, the scandals we've seen, make it quite clear that a lot of people are very concerned about the data that they hand over in order to get services online. Uh, they're concerned about the, the stewardship of that data, and they're looking for reassurance that their personal data won't be abused or that it could be put places where they have some control over it. And we've seen, you know, just in European law has changed recently with the GDPR, legislative concerns about that as well. So it's an area that we've been thinking about for a long time inside the BBC with our partners and others. We have taken the results of some research we did in a program called Human Data Interaction, where we looked at people's real life concerns about their personal data, and we hypothesized that if you gave people a secure repository where they could store that data and then use it in ways that gave them value in their lives, they'd want to do that. And that was the origin of the BBC Box as a research project. It was, could we provide a place where people could put personal data that would be absolutely under their control? And then could we, as a broadcaster and a developer, think of interesting things to do with that data that would give value back to the people? So this is a physical device in a, or the concept is a physical device. It's a real device. It's, it's a real device at the one. moment. You've actually made some. So, so you're, you're putting this in people's homes. So it's a physical device in a home that's under the owner's full control. That's the idea. So what we did, okay, so the basics are it's a Raspberry Pi in a box, mm. right? We're not talking about sophisticated technology. We haven't been out making our own silicon. We've taken a Raspberry Pi. We've been working on a research project for the past three years now called Databox, which is about a secure personal data repository. We've run Databox on the Raspberry Pi, put it into a hardware setting. It's actually a wooden box. It's hexagonal. It looks quite nice. It has some LEDs that flash when you do things. So, you know, little blinky lights things because people like those. And at the moment, we built a couple of them as prototypes. And we're now looking at the next stage, which would be to do some user research with them. So we're only at the stage now of we have the, we have the prototype and the concept. Mm -hmm. We think we know what we want, which questions we want to ask people. And we want to figure out whether we can get real value out of this. But your point is that your data is on the box. In the same way as your photographs are on your phone, unless you choose to upload them to the cloud, so the personal data that you ingest into the box stays there and can only be processed there by applications which also run on the box. So this is in contrast to putting your personal data in the cloud or having it at various cloud repositories which you may or may not be aware where, where those are or how they're being accessed. That, that's right. And it's not to say that people won't want to use cloud-based services. It's that we think there's scope for an alternative. Our research to date has demonstrated that some user desire to have more control. And we thought that psychologically to offer people a physical device and say, your data's here. When you unplug it, it's no longer accessible. It's a probe. It allows us to ask some really interesting questions. So one of the demo applications we built, one of our prototypes, allows you to ingest your iPlayer viewing data 
um, some data from your Instagram profile, available via its public API, and your Spotify playlists, again, available via the public API. So we're not, you know, we're not taking anything that's not public. But to combine that data in a way that is unique, because those three sources of data, we think, can help improve the quality of recommendations for media and things like that. The data only exists on the box. It's only in that place, and not even the BBC has access to it. So while it's running, nobody has access to the data that's on your personal box except you. You can choose to install applications on it which will do things with it, like generate recommendations, but it's all under your control. So we want to try out what it's like to give people as much control as they could have to see how that informs our existing work on recommendations, our existing work on data stewardship, whether this is something which people really do va find valuable. And we don't know. It's not like we're building something because we know the answer. Yeah. We're precisely building it because we don't know the answers, but we think it's a really good question. Well, let, let's bring uh, Nick into the conversation from, from Salford. Nick, um, the BBC R&D has been involved in this, creating this personalised documentary using object-based media. Tell us a little bit more about this program and, and the, the reasons for doing it. So Instagramification is uh, an online documentary about the good, the bad and the ugly of the world's fastest growing social network, Instagram. It was made by an independent company called Spirit Media, but commissioned by BBC R&D uh, using our, it's powered by and authored using our, our tool Story Kit, which is an object-based media toolkit. Um, and what that does is it allows us to uh, create and publish uh, object-based experiences. So for Instagramification, each viewer gets a slightly different version of the documentary, which is based on the data we've collected about them. So for example, if you're based in uh, Scotland and you love sports and technology, but you're not particularly into celebrity culture uh, and you want to be informed, in the documentary, you'll get a slightly different version of the documentary than somebody in, say, England, who's not particularly interested in sport or technology, but loves celebrity culture and wants to be entertained. You, you talk about object-based media there. Can you explain what object-based media is and how it differs from what we do today? Okay, so if we think about uh, traditional television now, a television program is made up of lots of different assets or objects and that's what we're referring to when we talk about objects. And they might be um, video, they might be a scene or a shot from a, a, a scene. They might be a, an audio clip, which may include dialogue, it may include the background music, or it may include sort of graphical assets that go over the top of, of the picture. Each of these component parts is an object. Now, how it works now is we kind of put all of these into an edit suite, we author them out, and that's our finished piece of video. That's our television program. Object-based media allows us to be a bit more versatile with that process. So imagine that um, we could tag each of those objects with metadata. Um, and imagine that if that metadata then, so going back to what Bill was saying about collecting data about our audience, the more that in the future, the more the audiences interact with the BBC, the more we'll learn about them as people and as individuals. Um, we could then match their data with the data in each of the objects and then maybe rearrange, remix, or um, choose which objects to keep in or omit based on their preferences and based on what we know about people. And therefore, basically, publish out different versions of the same content that might be more personal to them. Fantastic. So th th this augurs really well for an exciting future for the viewer um, and, and new opportunities for the, for the consumer. But what does that mean for the program makers? Is, is, is there certainly a lot more work they have to get involved with? Um, it's a good question. So it depends. At the moment, we're still learning what that production process is, and we're still learning what the, what the, 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 the true value of object-based media and how best to execute it. So Instagramification is part of that, is part of that study, really. One thing we don't know yet is how would that data, how would each of those objects be um, be tagged with metadata? Where in the production process, where in the workflow would that happen? Another thing we're, we're kind of exploring is previous um, experiments we've done in object-based media um, have often entailed producers to create a lot more work. So, for example, we recently did uh, the 1,000th episode of, of BBC Click. Um, which is more of a kind of a branch narrative, choose your own adventure type format. Um, what that means, obviously, is you have to make much more content for less eyes as you kind of play your way through different paths of that content. 
with Instagramification, we were very keen to explore if we could actually um, reuse the same assets, but be much more clever about it. So rather than creating hours and hours worth of content for what's effectively, say, a 20-minute documentary, we only create slightly more content, and the changes are more what we call micro changes. Um, so subtle changes that that don't affect the, the, the course of the story too much, but affect how you experience it. So we're still exploring how best to do that, how to get the best value out of it. Um, but yeah, it will change the way uh, producers think about how they make programs. We'd like to think of it's more of an opportunity to create more interesting types of content pieces rather than creating much more work, though. I mean, as, as we've also heard from Bill, um, BBC R&D is, is looking ahead. It's looking at what's possible. Um, it, it's, it's trying things out. How much of this is from a sort of storytelling angle and necessity and, and how much is, is driven by this massive increase in broadband delivery and, and, and streaming and, um, and more bandwidth that we're, we're, we're pushing into homes? Uh, well, it's better both, really. Um, we're always interested to explore uh, new storytelling formats. Um, but of course, uh, you know, the, the, the rise in bandwidth is allowing us to do that. It, it's an enabler for us. Um, the biggest driver behind Instagramification was, you know, we, we do a lot of research into our audiences. Uh, and one area the BBC is, is always trying to do better at is we, we, we struggle to reach younger audiences. By younger, we mean 18 to 34 year olds, young adults. Uh, you know, we, we're facing increased competition from, from streaming services and from, um, from social networks. Um, and one thing we know about those younger audiences, it, that's a very diverse group. You know, I think I've said 18 to 34. It's a big age range. But also within that group, there's, it's a massively diverse group of people with different interests, different personalities. And one thing object-based media allows us to do is to, well, what we're exploring is whether we can create the same piece of content that's aimed at those people, but actually meets their needs in different ways. So that, for me, was the biggest driving force behind Instagramification. So, Bill, if I can turn, turn to you, um, we're hearing what's been happening on the programme side with, with this object-based media programming. Um, is this something that BBC Box can kind of work alongside oh. or work to, in collaboration with? Ab absolutely. Um, it, it, so, if you think of the idea that we have all these media assets and they're going to be assembled at your end rather than at our end, which is the core of object-based media, in order to do the personalisation which we've been talking about, which is important, you need to tell the BBC quite a lot about yourself. You might not actually want to share all of those things with an organisation for whatever reason. There may be sensitivities about some of it. With the box approach and the idea of a personal data store, you can put the stuff that you think is sensitive into your BBC box and it can do the filtering for you. It can help shape the experience you get through an object-based media experience without the BBC or indeed any other broadcaster knowing that that's going on. So you can take the decision making right to the user as well and store that, store that personal information in a secure repository but still use it to personalise your experience. So, so the two absolutely work in sync and obviously there are lots of things you don't mind an organisation knowing about yourself. We all share an enormous amount online, but there may be sensitivities that you don't want to, to share. And we think that we can explore that space where people are concerned about their data. We know young people are concerned about their personal privacy, that, that despite the, 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 the belief or the argument that nobody cares about privacy anymore, actually young people do care about it. They just find it hard to assert their privacy and their data rights because the technology doesn't make it possible. So we think we can give them technologies that will appeal to them, that will allow them to look after their personal data in the way they choose, and will also give them the access to all these astonishing media experiences. It's terrific development work you're doing, and, and these ideas that, that are coming out uh, you know, for a, a consumer, um, amazing. And, and the fact that we're looking at more personalised programmes and getting so privacy sorted at the outset, um, it's got to be welcomed. Um, for both of you, look, we look forward to seeing uh, where these, these projects go in the near future. But, but for now, Bill and Nick, thank you both very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you. Yeah.